Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're building a website monitoring tool from scratch using a RoboMotion and OpenAI's vision. We're also leveraging active pieces as a backend or webhook to interface with OpenAI's vision to extract the data. And we're also using Google Drive to facilitate the hosting of the files. So here are the concepts that we're going over today. We're learning how to do a screenshot within RoboMotion. And then we're using Google Drive's API to upload the file so that we can catch it inside of the active pieces environment. We're going to be using OpenAI's vision to extract the text from the website. And then that's going to be sent back to RoboMotion environment. And you're going to be learning how to manage the files inside of RoboMotion. Here's an overview of what the RoboMotion is. We're going through this and build all this step-by-step -step from scratch. I'm also giving you some instruction on how to connect to your Google Drive so that you can upload your screenshot into Google Drive temporarily. Let's go and take a look at the overview of what we're covering in today's video. So we're building a website monitoring tool, which we're navigating to a website. So we're providing it a, with a URL. Then we're going to be taking a screenshot of the web page and we're going to be saving it to our local directory. We're then going to be writing some functions to determine if that file has changed between the previous run, which it could be from yesterday or the day before. And then we're comparing that with today's screenshot and we're doing comparison between the file difference between those two. So I'm showing you guys how to write that function of how to de detect the change between the two different runs. Uh, if there's no change between the two, then we're going to go ahead and terminate the process since there's really no point of having to go forward if there's no changes between the file size or that screenshot. We're using Google Drive as a temporary drive so that we can push that screenshot into OpenAI. We're uploading to Google Drive and then we're pulling that file from ActivePC, which then uploaded into a temporary location up in the cloud. And then we're going to be using that URL against OpenAI and then use OpenAI to describe the image and extract the text that we need from that screenshot. So we're using OpenAI Vision to read the website's text. It's going to be used for the email that we're sending ourselves with the information about the website. So in my case, it's about the registration information for the new season. It's going to give us the date, the information. I'm showing you guys how the prompt looks like in a little bit. So once we got the text, we're going to send the text back into RoboMotion, which we're using RoboMotion to send ourselves an email notification. And then that email is going to contain the description that we got from ActivePieces. So once that's done, the steps is cleaning up a Google Drive and the screen screenshots from our local directory. Since we're using Google Drive uh, as a temporary means to pass the file around from our local drive into the cloud, uh, we're going to go and de delete that uh, file from uh, Google Drive. And then lastly, we're going to go and clean the screenshots from our local directory since we only want to keep the latest file and just get rid of everything else. This will enable us to keep our local directory clean. So that's what we're building up today. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Dennis. I'm a principal software engineer and I make videos on coding, AI and automation um, every week. Consider liking uh, this video if you found it valuable and also consider subscribing to my channel. So uh, with that out of the way, let's go and start uh, with this automation. Before we start with building the automation, let's go and take care of the requirements that we need in order to perform this automation. So the first thing that you're going to need is an email account. I'm assuming everyone has an email account at this point. In our case, we're using Gmail for this demonstration. We're using the shared uh, service account, and then you're going to need a Google Drive. I'm underneath this RoboMotion folder that I've created, which sits on top of the main drive. So this currently it's empty. You're going to have to create a folder where you want the files it's going to live in for this automation. We're going to have to capture the folder ID. If you navigate to this folder, you can see here that there's a folder ID for each one of these. So once we have that, we're going to go and create a service account. So this documentation here in RoboMotion's docs, which I'm going to be linking in the description, but essentially you're going to go to this console.developersgoal.com to set up the, the project and then create a service account. The service account is a way of giving access to a third party service to allow it to perform certain actions. So if you don't have any project, 
or you're gonna have to create a new project you're gonna have to create a new project by clicking on this new project i already have a new project right here so once you added the project you're gonna have to navigate to enable apis and services which then you're gonna have to add and enable the service that you need for this service account right in my case i'm gonna be needing the google drive account so you're gonna have to type in drive you're gonna go to google drive and then if you don't have it yet you can have to enable it or add it and activate it we're going to go ahead and go back into the main uh, dashboard page so i'm going to go back and then all we're going to do is going to go to credentials and we're going to create credentials here and we're going to be uh, selecting the service account once you created your service account which is down in the description here you're going to be providing the service account details, uh, the name and the account information. And then you, it's going to give you this screen or it's going to give you the email address for that account. All right. So once you get an account, then you're going to be using that information to and share it from the Google Drive. So what I have here in my Google Drive is I'm in this directory. I'm going to go ahead and click on the shared and I'm going to go ahead and add this person right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my service account in this box and then i'm going to go ahead and share it so that that service account will have ac access to this folder in my google drive account so once that's out of the way we're going to go ahead and go back to the documentation you're going to have to grab the key from this google service account and we're going to go ahead and copy it so it's like a json with the private key and some other information related to accessing this account from RoboMotion. so once you got that json copied we're going to go back into RoboMotion and you're going to go to your vault by clicking on the, the top left of your screen and then you're going to have to go and type in your password and go to that vault and if your vault is locked you're going to have to enter your private key and able to access it so i'm going to go ahead and go to it so from here if you need to create and add an item for your service account you're going to have to go and select document which you can then go ahead and paste the json that you copied from google's console and then you're going to name it appropriately based on this type of account that you copied so once that's been set then you're pretty much set all right so that's pretty much a setting up process and then we can go ahead and now start with building this automation so let's go ahead and start this automation let's start from the beginning by creating a new project let's add a new project i'm going to name this website tracker v2 and then we're going to be adding inject so we're going to right click in this canvas we're going to go ahead and insert inject this is kicking off this automation the first thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to be introducing a function so this is where we're going to be defining the variables for this entire project we're defining some functions here specific to the directory and some of the stuff that we're needing as we create the screenshots we're defining some functions along the way closer to where the executing modules are in the first function here that we're defining in the setup process uh, we're going to create, define a function here called generate file name It's going to be using the year, month, day down to the seconds as the unique screenshot name. So we're naming it screenshots underscore, and then we're going to be using the year down to the seconds and then we're using dot PNG. So this is the unique file name. So every time we generate a new screenshot, we create a unique identifier for that screenshot. So we're defining this file name, which we're calling the function. So we're setting to this file name property. And then the URL is the actual URL, which uh, you want to monitor for. In my case, it's this aquatic programming, which is this website. So I just want to make sure that I can use this later on to capture the date. So this is really what I'm interested in, but I'm capturing this entire page. So really I'm going about it in like a lazy fashion. I will use AI to do all the hard work for me. And then the next one is the directory. This is the directory where the, the screenshots are saved to. I've chosen this path underneath the C drive, RoboMotion directory, and then the screenshots, and then the Rose, Roseville PR, which is where all my screenshots is stored at. So the next one is the Google Drive. I'm essentially defining a G drive folder ID here. So if you go back to your Google Drive, the folder ID goes after the forward slash after that folder so folder forward slash and then that's the folder id so that's the folder id that you need to copy and paste into that variable right. so we're going to go and set up and that's that for this function and we're going to call this setup we're going to call this setup and then the next one is 
the most interesting part of this automation, we're going to go and do a screenshot of the web page for that URL. So we're going to go and define a subflow here and we're going to go and name this take screenshot. So inside of this subflow, there's always a begin and end. So this dictates the beginning and the start of this execution with this subflow. I'm going to go in and copy some of this, the modules here inside of this subflow and go through this one by one. So let's go and connect this first. So the beginning is going to go to the beginning and the end is going to go to this end. So I'm going to go and walk you through how this works. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm adding an open browser. It's underneath this core browser that open and it's underneath this uh, browser package. So if you do a search for browser, it's underneath the, pro the, the browser package and then you open the browser. So all the browser related stuff is underneath that browser package. So once you open up the browser, we're going to go and set this to headless Chrome. By default, it's set to Chrome. So you're going to have to switch that to headless Chrome. And then we're going to go and navigate and open up, that, open up that link. The URL that we're setting here is the one that we defined in the beginning when we added that set of function. So we're going to go and switch the message and we're going to pass in the URL. So to remind you where that's coming from, it's from this URL. Let's go and go back to the subflow, open the link. And then this timeout in seconds, 30 seconds. I think that's the default. And then the next part of this run is we're adding a run script here. So run script allows you to run a script within the, the context of the browser window. So if we go, let's go ahead and add that. It's also underneath the browser. So if you go to browser here and search for run script, it should be as well. So that's how you find it. So that's the run script. And then we're going to go ahead and take the height. We're, we're not really returning the message because it's different than the actual function uh, as part of the programming package. So what we're doing here is which we're capturing the height of the body of the website. And we're going to take all these different elements, such as the scroll height. We're going to take the offset height, the document element and offset height, all these different heights. And we're going to put it all together and we're going to take the maximum height. And then we're setting it into this page height. And then once we get the page height, we're going to go and add this 100 as a buffer. I noticed that it's not really capturing the entire website. Sometimes it's a little bit off. So you're going to have to play a little bit with the number here. So I went with 100 to make sure that I captured the entire website from top to bottom without any cutoff. So add this buffer and it's going to go and return it. Once we do a return, we're going to go and output that into this result variable. It's going to go and call it page height and in this message object. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and close that browser using this browser ID. After we do that, we're going to go and go to the next phase, which is we're calling this function. We're introducing this function here, which will allow us to add uh, some options to the browser when we open it. So it's underneath the programming function. So this is different than the run script that we added. So this essentially is the context of the rubber motion environment. So we're setting the window size and we're passing in the page height that we got from the previous uh, step right? Setting the window size of 1920 and then the page height of this, and then we're adding, hiding the scroll bars. So this is one of the options here for the browser options. So when we open this, you see here that the option is being set in the browser options. So that's what we're setting up. So I'm being strategic here as I def how I define the functions and the different variables. I'm defining the variables close to the executing modules. So it doesn't really get lost. So I know exactly where I need to change a variable if I have to. So the open browser is the same thing as the previous one. We're using the headless browser by default it's Chrome, but we're going to go and use the headless browser and it's maximized. And like I said, it's using the browser options that we've set in that function. And I believe that's it for this one. And then we're opening up the link. Same thing as the previous one. We're sending it to the URL and that's about it. And you're going to have to add a screenshot here it belongs into this browser package as well uh, when you introduce a screenshot you're gonna have to add where the screenshot needs to be saved when we set up the function here I've defined the file name here and the directory so we're concatenating those two pieces of information that's gonna form the directory and the file name where the actual screenshots save that this is the screenshots dot PNG and we're using that as a location where we're saving the path. So if you go and switch to the JS expression here, 
let's go ahead and make this full screen. So you can go and pass in a literal string here with a back tick, and you can pass in the meshes dot directory and then forest forward slash, and then the message dot file name. And that's going to form the, the full path to where the, the screenshot saved to. And then the output is where the path is. So once we got this screenshot in place, we're going to go and close the browser. So we're going to close that browser window and this, this ends this entire subflow. So now we can go back to the main flow here. Let's go in and save. Make sure we don't lose any changes. So once we got the screenshot, we're going to go and list out the files in this directory. So we're going to go and look for list directory. It's inside of this file system. We're going to go and add this one here. And then we're setting the path as part of the input. So the path to the input is the same path that we set up in the beginning, which is in the directory. We're going to go and pass this. And then we're passing in the files and the, the, into this message.files. And we want to make sure that when we set this option, we want to make sure that we're pulling in the files based on the last modified. So we want to get the last modified or the newest file on the top of the array. So, so we can easily identify which one's the latest. So we don't have to do sorting inside of this automation. So it makes our life easier that way. So we're going to go ahead and sort it and we're going to make sure that it's based on the last modified. And then we're going to go and it doesn't really matter in this case, but it's top 10 by default. And then we're going to go and pull all these attributes, the name is directory size and modification time. Right. And after that, we're going to go and introduce a switch, which will help us determine if there's any files to process. So let's go and do some evaluation. You can see that there's two output ports. We're going to go and uh, add two ports and I'm going to go and explain it to you how it works. So if there's less than two files, that means there's really nothing to process. So if you run this automation for the first time, so for instance, there's no screenshot in this case, we're going to go and remove this. So if you run this for the first time, it's one. And then the only time you're able to, to make the comparison is when you have two files. So you can't really do anything if you only have one or no file in this directory. So you have to make sure there's actually some files in here. If there's less than two files, we're going to terminate this, this whole automation. Otherwise, if it's equals to greater than two, then we have at least two files. So at least we can do some comparison. So the first is we don't have any file. And then the second is we, we have something to process. Let's add a stop here. So when there's nothing to process, we're going to go ahead and stop. And this ends this whole automation flow. And it, otherwise, we're going to go and set up the process. So the next one, we're setting up the file difference. So we're going to go and introduce a function here. And I'm going to paste in some code to give us a understanding of the difference between the different the different files right so if you can remember earlier we're setting the files array into this message of files and we're setting the newest file on the top of the array so the way we get the latest file is we do a message of files and we're it's based on an index so we're just grabbing it based on the zero index and then we're setting the size uh, whenever you list out the files from the directory it's going to give you three or four attributes it's going to be the size depending on what we've selected. So we're setting the size, the name of the file, and then if it's a directory and the modification date. The way we can determine the size is based on this size attribute or property. And we're setting it into this latest and then this previous. So we're doing a comparison between the two different file sizes and we're using this function to determine the, pay, the percentage difference between those two. What this does is this gives you a percentage from zero to 100 of how how much of a difference between the current to the previous file size. So we're getting the previous one and the latest files, and then we're setting the size difference here into this property and we're returning the message object. Let's go and save that. And we're gonna go and we're gonna go and rename this to determine file size. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing. So the next one is we're gonna be introducing another switch here so that we can determine if there's a significant change between the previous screenshot and the current screenshot. So we're gonna go and look at the, the different ports here. If the size difference is greater than one, then it, there's a pretty significant difference. Obviously you're gonna have to play around with the numbers here if you want it to be 5%, 1%, however uh, you want to set this. So if there's like a subtle changes between that within a, a 1%, then it's enough for me to trigger that something has changed between the previous uh, and the current snapshot. So what we're doing here is the greater than or equal to than one, then we're gonna go and process it. 
if it's less than one we're gonna go and terminate this process so essentially what we're doing so at the bottom it says here that's less than one we're gonna go and terminate that by introducing a stop here so i'm gonna go ahead and re refactor this later on for now it's a little bit cluttered because we have two stops i'm gonna simplify this a little bit once we go in further along in this video so we determined that there's actual difference between the previous and the current file so now we can actually go and further process this. We're gonna go in and upload this into Google Drive. So if the file change, we're just gonna go and process and upload it to Google Drive. So let's go and connect to Google Drive. Actually, we're gonna go and search for Google. From here, we're setting up the credentials. We're using the vault, and then we're picking the service account we created earlier. Once we're connected, we're gonna go ahead and upload to Google Drive. We're gonna upload and I'm gonna go ahead and move this up and move it here. And then now we're connected, we're gonna go upload the file. So now we're gonna go and set up the file path. So the file path is the same as where we uh, saved the screenshot. So let's go and go back to the screenshot subflow and grab the, the file path where the screenshot was saved. Let's go and do that and go here. And then the file path is, I'm setting it to an expression. I'm gonna get expand this one. And we're setting it to the directory and the file name. So that's pointing to the screenshot directory of the PNG. All right, let's go ahead and save it. So we're going to lose anything. And then the folder ID is, is already defined in the beginning of the flow. Remember here, I defined it in this Google Drive folder. This is the folder ID. We're going to use that into the upload file as this is where we're uploading this file inside of this folder ID. Once we actually get the file information, we're going to go and set up a function here. So this is where we're defining the function and the variables into ActiveBeast's webhook. So I'm gonna go and copy some code here and I'm gonna go and explain it. So this is where we define the web, webhook URL. This is also where we're gonna define the image prompt. So we're using this prompt to pass into OpenAI vision and then we're using this prompt to describe what the image is about. So as act as an experienced website data extraction specialist, I want you to analyze a given screenshot of a website and then identify key information accurately. And then I want this format for this season year registrations open on this exact registration date. And then I'm saying here, do not provide any additional explanations, context or commentary. Simply return the formatted uh, response in a clear, concise manner. So we're using this return output from OpenAI Vision. And we're sending it as part of the HTML body when we send an, an email. So essentially what we're doing here is we're setting up the payload for the webhook. We're passing in the Google file ID, which is the file ID when we upload the file to Google Drive. And then we're passing in the image prompt. So two properties that we're passing into the webhook. And then this is the webhook URL. I'm showing you guys how to set, set up the webhook in a little bit. But, but this is pointing to your ActivePieces account. And you have to make sure that the URL has to include the forward slash sync as we're expecting a response from that webhook. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Let's go back here to the upload file. So whenever we upload a file to Google Drive, it's gonna go and send us back the file ID of the file that was uploaded. So this is something that we can use later on when we make a request to the webhook, since this is what we're gonna be using in ActiveBasis when we pull that file so that we can pass it into OpenAI. The file ID for the Google Drive is gonna be on this variable inside of the message. So I'm gonna go and rename this into setup active function. I'm gonna go and rename this. So since this is essentially what we're doing here, I'm gonna go ahead and move things around, give us some room. And then we're adding an HTTP request. And then all we're doing here, we're gonna go and set up all these different pieces for the request body. Remember that the webhook payload includes that information. We're going to go and include that here and pass it as part of the request. We're not changing the request headers. We're going to keep the content headers, custom headers as content type of application JSON. We don't care about the cookies, the response. We're going to leave it since we're only going to make a single HTTP request. So it's an HTTP method post. And then we're setting the URL, so the URL from the webhook back here. And we're going to go and pass in this variable for the webhook. And that's the URL that's needed for this call. Maybe set up the webhook URL, no authentication. And then I believe that's that for the HTTP request. We're going to go and name this describe image using 
actually it's open ai vision before we go any further let's go in the, and hop on to activesis so we can see what the web hook looks like so inside of activesis so what we're doing here is we added a catch web hook which essentially is an ex only accepting two properties in the body which is the image prompt and the google id so the image prompt like i previously mentioned is what we're sending into openai vision and then the google file id is the file id for the screenshot that we uploaded into google what we're going to do is we're going to go and read that file and then we're passing that file url into openai so openai vision can describe that image for us so that's what we're doing in this webhook. So we're receiving as part of this body. So the next step of the process is we're reading that file. So once we get the Google file ID and the image prompt, we're gonna go and pass in the file ID into this read file in ActivePieces. So we're adding this action of read file inside of this Google Drive piece. And then we're connecting to that same account that I was connecting to earlier. And then we're gonna be passing in the file ID that we received as part of the body of the webhook request. And then we're going to leave the destination file name since we don't really need it. So you can see here that if you do read a file from Google Drive, it's, it's going to get uploaded in temporarily into this ActivePieces cloud where we can then read it and pass it into OpenAI. And that's how we can work around passing the files between RoboMotion and ActivePieces. So we're going to go and read that file of the file ID. And then once we get that URL from ActivePieces, we're going to go and pass that as part of this image. So we're gonna go in, read that file, and we're passing in the URL that we receive here from Google Drive. And then same thing here for the image prompt, we're passing in the image prompt from the body of the webhook. The detail, you can leave it to auto. You can choose between low and high resolution. I recommend keeping it to auto or high to make sure that the accuracy is there. And obviously it's more expensive to do so. You wanna stick to detail as high as possible to make sure that you have a pretty accurate response from OpenAI Vision. So everything else is the same. And then once you get the output, you're going to go and send it back as part of the return response. I'm forming a JSON with the property of Vision, and then I'm passing in the response. But one thing I've noticed here that is breaking this return response is uh, sometimes the response from OpenAI will include a, a line break. So uh, I went ahead and introduced this code, uh, code piece, which accepts the, the response from OpenAI vision and then passing it as an image description. I'm going into the code and then returning and replacing the line breaks with an actual HTML breaks. And then we're returning it back into RoboMotion. So the output here is sent back as part of this return response. And then we're setting it the body type of JSON and then we're going to pass that in. So then once you're done, you're going to go and publish that and we're going to go back into RoboMotion. So going back here, so this is the actual HTTP request. So from this point, we receive the data back from ActivePieces. The response is stored into this RESP. That's where the vision response is living at. So what we're, what we're doing next is we're sending an email. We're taking that response and sending up an email. So we're going to introduce a function here. We're going to add a function. This is specific to sending an email. Let's go and change this to send email or set up an email. So the function that we're, we're introducing here are a set of functions to so set up the variables. And we're gonna go and just copy and paste here. So I'm adding some variables pertaining to the, the email actions that we're performing. So the two from subject and the HTML body, along with the message resp, right? With the vision. So the vision is coming from active pieces since we've defined the vision property here we're extracting that property from that rest.vision and then we're adding it as part of the html body right that we created here so we set up the two from subject and html body as part of this uh, function and then we're returning that message and this is inside of this fun programming function module Right, so the next step is we're going ahead and sending an email. So we're going to go ahead and search for mail. It's underneath the mail package. And then we're going to grab the mail. And then the from is the from setting it to, uh, and then two would be MSG2. And then if you want to set the CC, you can also set up the CC as well in the reply to. And the subject would be the subject. And then the body, and I believe it's the HTML body. 
yep HTML body is the HTML body and then here for the credentials we want to make sure that we pick the, the, the vault and then the Gmail account that's been set up for it okay once that's done one thing that we also want to uh, check here is the HTML body underneath these options so once you've um, added the credentials here you also want to set the HTML bodies and it will send the message as HTML instead of plain text. So once we send the actual email, we're going to go end and actually delete the file from going to go and search for Google Drive. And underneath that would be delete file or folder. Let's go and add that in. So when we upload the file into Google Drive, we're given this file ID which is by default, we didn't really change it. But if we did change it, then we have to change this as well. So right now it's set to the default file underscore ID. So we don't have to do anything. So we pass the file ID and then we're deleting the same file ID from Google Drive. And then after that, we're gonna go and disconnect. I'm gonna go and look for Google Drive and disconnect here. Look for disconnect, right? It's always a good idea to disconnect anytime you connect into a service whether it's Google or a browser, if you need to terminate that request or whatever. Let's go ahead and disconnect. And then the last one is we're gonna go and stop. This is gonna end this whole execution or the, the whole automation. Right. The last thing that I also wanna introduce is before we actually do a stop here is I wanna do a cleanup. So over time, if you go back to your screenshots, over time, the screenshots are going to keep adding onto this directory. Every time you end the automation, we want to make sure that we clean up this directory so that we didn't fill this up with screenshots over time, since this list is going to keep growing. So what we're doing is we're introducing a subflow here. We're going to go introduce a subflow. So after we disconnect, we're going to go and go and clean up. And then we're going to call this cleanup screenshots. And we're going to go to it. So what we're doing here is we're going to go and add a new function. We're going to go and filter the files. So we're filtering out the latest from the list by doing this slice. So we're going to start out with the, the first index and then going down to all the files on this list. So let's say if you have 10, it's going to go from the first index up to the last and it's going to skip the first one, which is the latest. And then we're, we're assigning the output of this into the original files which now doesn't have the latest files. So once we have the files here, now we can go and iterate all the files and delete it. So we're gonna go and save this and we're gonna go and do a for each. And do a for each and then we're passing in the files since the file lives here and it's gonna go and for each file in that files array, we're setting it to, to file and then we're setting it here. We're deleting the screenshots. We're gonna go and look for for each file, we're going to go and just delete it. Let's look for delete and go here, delete file directory. And I believe for this one, I'm passing it. I think the same one where we saved the screenshot, we're going to pass an expression. We're going to go ahead and pass it, the file. So inside of this message directory, which was defined in the beginning of the automation flow is where the directory is. And then for each iteration of the files for each file, we're going to grab the file name, which is the screenshot.png. And that's, that's going to complete the full path to that file. And we're going to go and delete that file. And then after that, we're going to go and go this to the end. And whenever you do a for each, uh, it's not going to automatically, at least in Robo Motion, it's not going to automatically go to the next one. You're going to have to attach it somehow by doing a, a label, or you can go and swing this back if you want to. So this essentially will achieve what you want to. It was going to go through to each file inside of this files array. Obviously, you probably don't want to do that. So let's introduce a label here. Call this go to next file. That's what we're going to be calling it. So every time we go to the next file, it's going to go to the next file and so on and so forth. So after we delete the file, we're going to go and go to the next one until we run out of files. So we're going to go to and then we're going to go and set it to next file. So delete the file and then it's going to go back and go to the next file next file and then after the four h has completed it's going to go and execute the one in the bottom which is going to end this subflow for us let's go and save this and that's that for the cleanup screenshots so you can clean this up a little bit and make it pretty if you want 
and that terminates that whole execution or this whole automation. So the last thing I want to introduce here is we can actually make this a little bit better. So as you notice here that we've introduced three stops here. So to make it a little bit tidier, I like to create a stop, isolate the stop, and then introduce a label here. So let's go and introduce a label here and you'll see what I mean. We're going to, we're going to go and call this terminate. We're terminating the function or this automation. So every time we go to this label, we're going to go ahead and hit stop. Now we can go and delete this and we can delete this and we can go ahead and delete this. So now we can go and go to, and now we can go and chain that to go to terminate. I mean, it's, it didn't really save us a whole lot, but it made things a bit more cleaner. Every time we want to terminate this whole automation, we can add additional steps here. So if let's say we want to move the screenshots as part of this, we can easily move that. And this will be included every time we call this terminate. So we can change this here and then we can also change that here. And now every time we terminate, it's going to go to this one, which will then clean up the screenshots. So obviously we're going to have to add a go to as well here and that will go to the terminate as well, right? Go to terminate. So every time you, you want to end this process, it's going to go and go to this one. And then now you can add additional steps here if you want to, as part of the termination process of your automation. So let's go and run this whole automation and see how it works cross fingers since we didn't really do any testing here. Let's go ahead and run this. So the first one has run. So now it gave us this PNG. Obviously it didn't really go through the whole process since there's only one file. It didn't go through all the way. So let's go and run it again. So after running a few times, you can see here that uh, the output for the screenshot, the difference is, is very minimal. So it's less than 1%. So 912 kilobytes versus 907. So it didn't really give us uh, a, an email in the process. Let's say we want to test out what happens if there's a significant change between those two. Let's go and get rid of one of these. And let's go and go straight from here to and connect it straight into Google Drive. Let's go and upload it. So if there's something to process, we're going to go ahead and upload straight and process it that way. We're going to skip the check to determine the size difference so we can make sure that we're getting the email. So the emails are properly working. Let's go ahead and run this again. We should get an email pretty soon since we have it set to always send us an email. Since we, we got rid of the determining size check, we're going to go ahead and skip where it goes to the connect and it's uploading the file. You can see here that it's going to active pieces. Now it's describing the image using AI vision. And then soon enough, it sh we should get an email in our inbox with the new email that describes what we want. All right, now it's went through and sent an email. And if you go to actual inbox, you can see that we got a new email. And then if you go to here, the swimming registration page has changed. So this is the email that we get according to our specifications here. Remember that we added this text, which is static. And then this output on the last one would be the fourfold registration that is open on August 14, 20 or at 12 p.m. All right. So if you made it this far in this video, I really appreciate you. If you like this type of content, please go and check out the school community where I'm posting a template that I did today, among others. So please go and check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video.